Hello there everybody. Thank you for clicking on the video and uh, it's great to have you along as I just show uh, some of these knives that I've done. And uh, it's taken me a little bit of time to complete some knives but I just thought I'd show you three knives that I have finished. Alright, well the first uh, first couple knives I'll show you will be uh, starting off with this one right here and uh, here's the sheath as you can see here just some uh, dark brown pre-dyed veg tan leather and uh, just some cream colored stitching and then the knife here this is really a, one of my favorite knives that I've ever done. Check out that maple burl right there. See if it'll, I think it's focusing. Hard to tell exactly, but uh, maple burl, and then uh, this is a 1095 steel, high carbon with a acid and peroxide wash, like a etch, acid peroxide etch, along with a stone wash. So um, this is just a nice little skinning knife that I have put together and uh, nice and sharp. Um, I sharpen on my grinder and then strop it back and forth. But uh, this is one of my Esker models and uh, showing you the Esker behind an Esker. So <laughs> how cool is that? But uh, anyway, it's got some black liners as you can see there. And uh, just uh, it's a handy, beautiful Beautiful little knife, little knife, very, very proud of it, and uh, fits really good right in the sheath there. Good, good grip. So yeah, that's the first knife I'm going to show you. Second knife today is also an, an Esker, and um, this is the, the sheath, and uh, this is uh, kind of a unique and, and special sheath here. You can see it's black leather. This is Horween leather from the Horween Tannery in Chicago. And uh, I did green stitching on there to match the, the liners, the liners of the knife. Um, what is special, before I show you the knife, what is special is I lined this, I don't know if you can see there, but it's got a veg tan, a thin, about a three and a half ounce veg tan leather that I lined this with just to make it just a little bit thicker. And uh, I don't know quite how this, this is chrome tan leather, I'm not sure how the chrome tan leather will uh, treat the knife. I don't want it to, to rust or anything, so I um, just uh, did did this um, uh, lining. I lined li lined the sheath there. So anyway, um, so let's take a look at the knife right here, and um, here is the knife. Like I said, one of my Esker models, and uh, same exact blade as that that previous one. Um, 1095 high carbon with the acid and peroxide dip and um, then a, a stone wash so did did my own stone wash I've never done a video about that but I I do it in my wife's dryer clothes dryer and uh, put it in a plastic jug with some rocks and a little bit of soapy water and it, it makes a nice uh, checkered uh, speckled pattern on the knife so what's unique about this knife here these handle scales are uh, fire hose fire hose micarta Fire hose my carta. There's a guy that I buy these from in Ontario. He makes them himself. He's a retired firefighter from the city of Hamilton, Ontario, and uh, he makes these really cool scales. This is some of his earlier ones. Um, it's only the second time I've done it. He he gets pretty creative now with some different liners. I I put these liners on myself. This is G10. These are G10 liners, and uh, they uh, they look. I think they look pretty good. I tried to uh, match it up with. The uh, or, uh, try to match the liners with the same stitching, uh, but it's hard to get hard to get the Ritza thread in this color. I don't even know if they even if they make it in that uh, really bright bright green. But uh, yeah, all in all, uh, really happy with this with the way the both the knife and the sheath turned out. Um, this fire hose micarta, uh, as you can see, I I did a little handle contouring there and. Uh, fire hose micarta it ends up being just a bit uh, fuzzy I guess we could say a bit fuzzy and so then it um, you know 
makes a good grip. I think it'll be be a really good grip. Uh, brass brass pins, brass lanyard tube, and uh, yeah, I'm really hoping uh, hoping this knife is is works well for the person who's gonna gonna be getting it. Finally, um, the next knife, and you probably saw on the thumbnail, and you're wondering what in the world is that? Well, this is the first time I've tried kind of a rustic, primitive uh, type of knife. I'm calling this the Frontiersman, the Frontiersman's knife. It's not going to be a, a, a model of knife. I'm not going to make this again here, but um, here's the sheath, and um, just the <clears throat> the back side here, as you can see, um, it's got a bit of a dangler. It's a bit of a dangler carry, as you can see, which I think would uh, would work really well. Um, the uh, decoration, kind of the embellishments here, these are caribou antler tips from the just the tips of the antlers I, I cut off, and I just tied them in with some some leather there, and uh, underneath underneath it's got this uh, little extra extra piece of leather there. Got, got a fringe on it. It was really debating. Do I want to do a fringe? I don't know. But I decided to do a fringe. And uh, anyway, uh, this is just some scrap leather. Not really uh, anything fancy. In fact, this, this leather, the main body of the sheath, is uh, uh, some leather just turned inside out. The finished side is inside. And the other side, uh, this is just the non-finished side. And so now let's look at the knife. As you can see, a bone handle. This is caribou leg bone. Caribou leg bone. Oh, sounds like we got a jet taking off. Um, caribou leg bone, right here. And um, what I've done, I've had this bone sitting around for a long time. It was not probably cured the best. It was boiled, and then I picked it and let it sit around for a long time. Picked it and picked it and picked it some more. So it doesn't stink. You know, it just actually. It smells kind of like a nice caribou roast, but uh, it's uh, of course the blade goes in. It goes in. Uh, it's a hidden tang, so the blade goes in about to there. And what I've done here is I took some jute twine and uh, just wrapped it, wrapped it round and round, and uh, then uh, painted just painted some clear epoxy on there. So it's you can probably hear that there. It's clear. It's hard. You know, it doesn't look. I don't know. It looks okay, I think, but. Um, you know, uh, the, the blade, I just left the uh, the stuff on from the heat treat. It's professionally heat treated, hardened to 60, as are the other knives, hardened to 60. Both uh, those are 1095, this is 1095. Only reason I did this, I'm just going to keep this knife. It's kind of like an art knife or a, just an exhibit type knife. I'm just going to decorate it, uh, use it in my office. But this knife has a bit of a warp. I don't know if you can tell, but just a little bit of a warp in the uh, the blade there a little bit of a curl i don't even think i'm going to sharpen this this is just going to hang in my office it's something i've always wanted as a boy a caribou bone handled knife and so anyway i was able to put something together fill the handle uh, fill the interior of the bone with epoxy and stuck the blade in let that dry and then next day or so wrap the wrap this uh, jute twine painted epoxy uh, that to uh, get the epoxy in there so to solidify that so anyway that's my uh, that's my knife there my uh, frontiersman's knife so pretty cool pretty cool so anyway well thank you guys for watching the whole video all the way through and I appreciate that very much and uh, you know it's beautiful weather here now it's springtime here in the Arctic and uh, just lovely just just wonderful and uh, you know the, the snow is melting, the geese are flying, and it's beautiful, beautiful weather. So uh, awesome! We're out at our cabin just for the evening, and uh, just really glad, glad we can uh, be. Um... Oh, my daughter's uh, driving over here. Uh, and, okay, well she stopped. Anyway, but yeah, beautiful day. Great, great day to be out here, and uh, really nice to come out on the land. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time here on New Man Explore. Bye.